Every year, the Suffolk Wildlife Trust holds a photo competition. This year, the top prize has been awarded for a picture of a bee in flight. But what's unusual is the photographer. He's just 13 years old and took up the hobby a year ago. Cameron Smith doing what he does best, taking fabulous wildlife pictures. The Suffolk youngster was using his father's camera to take some close-ups of insects and flowers in his garden when he captured his prize-winning shot. There was a bee and he was on a flower, so I decided to try and take a picture of it. And it was, it was just flying for, for, for around it, and I just took lots and lots of pictures until I got the right one. And one of them was good and it was sharp. Cameron mm -hmm. entered the photo in the young photographer category, which he won. But then he beat the winners of all the other categories to take the top prize. I was just absolutely totally amazed. I thought he might stand a chance with the children's category, but we had to read the letter again to really believe that he'd won overall winner. That was just fabulous, really. So, yeah, very proud and, yeah, absolutely thrilled for him. According to one of the judges, himself a former winner of the competition, the thought and preparation that went into Cameron's photo is what makes it a worthy winner. It was just a superb photograph. It had that wow factor that you can't really say for sure what it is, but there's something special about the photograph. Um, and the fact that it was taken by someone so young um, is very heartening. It's nice to see that someone of his age has actually taken the time to go out in his back garden and take an award-winning photograph. Cameron intends to continue taking pictures and says he'll be entering next year's competition. Mary Amisandar, BBC Look East, Suffolk. Now, efforts to help the flood victims in Pakistan are stepping up across the region, with organisers hoping to raise £100,000 on one evening alone. Well, that event is in Luton on Saturday, with another big fundraiser coming up in Peterborough. This report is from Fatima Manji. Jahangir Nawaz has managed to get through to his brother in Pakistan. He's saying that there's nothing left, and now everybody's worried about their well-being. Infrastructure I is washed. There are no roads, bridges, those have gone. And apart from the infrastructure, people are now worried about their life and limb. At home in Peterborough, every day has been a worry for Jahangir and his family as they hear news of the situation. The UN says more than 17 million people have been affected. Milton Keynes-based charity World Vision is helping rescue people. A large number of people were displaced. A lot of people lost their homes up to half of those have still yet to be reached by any aid at all. And back in our region, there's a determination to get help to Pakistan. In Peterborough, these volunteers organise street collections. Despite some racist comments towards them, they're staying upbeat. A lot of positive feedback, a lot of uh, good, good vibes from them. They really wanted to give. Only a handful of uh, comments like that. And I'm very proud of my volunteers. They, they did very well. We raised quite a bit of money, which is good. But you just have to look faster, I guess. and try and do the best you can. In Luton, preparations are underway for a fundraising dinner where they plan to raise £100,000. This is our main floor. Um, uh, currently, we're going to have 500 people here on Saturday. This is where the main stage is going to be with the VIP event. This is, we're setting up so it can be a real five-star event. Uh, Luton's very used to the whole, uh, you know, the, the melas and the bazaars and the local community centre dinners, but this is very much an upmarket um, corporate sort of fundraiser, something very new, something very fresh. It's a black tie event, so uh, it'd be good fun, yeah. And to encourage people to donate, this we video is being watched. From we want your donations now! Rebuilding after the devastation isn't easy, but across the East, people are determined to do their bit to help. Fatima Manji, BBC News. And for more information on how you can donate directly, you can go to the website for the Disasters Emergency Committee. That's at dec.org.uk. Now, in exactly 100 days, we'll find out whether England's bid to host the 2018 World Cup has been successful. Now, if we get it, World Cup football could be coming to Milton Keynes, to Stadium MK. Tonight, though, it's the Carling Cup, MK Don's against Blackpool from the Premiership. Jonathan Park is there. Yes, Stuart, well, if you heard some helicopters around the Milton Keynes area this afternoon, you might just have seen or heard the FIFA delegates who were hovering around this area looking at Stadium MK as they headed north uh, to the northeast. 
Uh, now, MK Don Stadium here is one of the proposed venues for England's 2018 bid. More on that shortly, but it is a big night of Carling Cup action, second round action. MK Don's play against Blackpool, a Premier League opponent. Now, there are three other ties against Premier League opposition for our teams. It's a big night. Tom Williams looks ahead. Colchester have made an excellent start under new boss John Ward. Saturday's win means they're undefeated in four. Tonight's the toughest assignment yet, a trip to Sunderland. Well, we know what to expect. They had a good result at the weekend. So, you know, the one thing about playing this competition, you can't take it lightly. South End's only win this season came in round one. Boss Paul Sturrock has hinted at changes for their match at Wolves after Saturday's poor display. Norwich are flying, another late show against Swansea, earned a third straight win. What chance a fourth at Ewood Park? People say me, you're drawn Blackburn, and I think it's great because it's a premiership team away from home, a ground that you've not been, the environment's new. It's a test for everybody to see if we can step up again. Peterborough aren't playing Premier League opposition, but they'll come across a Premier League striker, Craig Bellamy's on loan at Cardiff, who are the visitors to London Road. This man could make his Ipswich debut. Striker Jason Scotland's available after yesterday's switch from Wigan. But this man isn't. Andros Townsend begins a three-match ban. He was sent off at Crystal Palace. Towner at Crewe. We've got down, listen, we want to we want to win the game of football. People talk about cups and is it a distraction? Listen, if you, if you can win a game of football, you know, it gives everyone a lift. Northampton have made a sticky start. No league wins so far. The Cobblers are away to Reading from the Championship. Tom Williams, BBC Look East. And if you're not lucky enough to be inside a stadium tonight, don't forget your local BBC radio station, the best place to be for commentary on your team. Now, eight years to go before the World Cup of 2018, 100 days to go before we find out if England are successful in their bid. Pete Winkham and the MK Dons chairman was in London today with some of those FIFA delegates with a presentation. How did it go? Oh, Jonathan, it was just fantastic to be there, actually, to be part of the nation's bid, to be there with all the other great cities of our country and putting our best foot forward. I thought it went very well today. Obviously, there's so many things involved as to whether you win or not. But what's very important is we're able to get across the messages of the bid. And that is just what a successful World Cup we would have if it comes to England. Yeah, obviously, don't give much away, but what, did they give you a nod and a wink? And did you get a good idea? Did you get a good feeling? No, you, they, they, I mean, it, just like we went through with the candidate host city process, the people that come, they're there to tick the boxes and to make sure that everything you've said you can do, they believe you will do. And of course, in England, we're so well prepared when you look at the presentations that we're able to make and you just saw how together the security issues um, the transport issues the low carbon agenda I mean whatever it was I hope we were able to tick those boxes and it was certainly a thrill being part of it well, Pete, good luck against Blackpool a team that's been in the news this season of course from the Premier League and uh, we'll tell you all about the Don's result tonight and your team's result in our late bulletin at half past ten back to you guys Jonathan thank you very much indeed Pete Winkleman on the program always makes me feel better he's so enthusiastic <laughs> he is, isn't he great, yeah it's time for the weather now, and uh, Chris, have we got any more tornadoes in the offing? Yeah, uh, hopefully no more tornadoes, but we do have some heavy rain.